Hi guys, my name is Sophie, I'm 21 years old and I'm from Manchester and this is my video contribution to the Young People Get Sick Too campaign. The Young People Get Sick Too campaign is an amazing online awareness campaign set up by young people for young people. It helps young people with different medical conditions come together and share their experiences and also provides a great support network for anyone who may be struggling. So today, in support of the cause, I've decided to come together and tell you all a little bit about my health condition and how it affects me on a day-to-day -day basis, and that is Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is one of a group of connective tissue disorders. Specifically, Marfan's results in a mutation on the fibrillin 1 gene, which affects the structure of the connective tissue. You can imagine the connective tissue as like a glue that holds everything together in the body, like a really, really good prit stick. It maintains the body's internal organs and protects the structure. People with Marfan's are typically tall, long-limbed, Slender. Does my bum look big enough? Mm -hmm. No, because your bum never looks big in anything! I have large hands and feet. <laughs> have a high palate in the mouth. Have an increased risk of cataracts on a detached retina. And most importantly, have an enlarged aorta. Your aorta is one of the most important arteries of the heart. It pumps blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. The issue with people with Marfan's is the aorta just simply isn't strong enough. It doesn't have a good enough protective structure to deal with the pressure and the weight of the blood being pumped out. Sadly, in medicine and science, there are currently no cures for this aorta growth. Only beta blockers, which can slow down the growth by reducing the blood pressure and the heart rate. This means that eventually most people with Marfan's have to have heart surgery, where the section of enlarged aorta is removed and replaced. As you can probably tell by now, I tick most of the boxes for being a typical Marfan. I'm 6 foot 2 in height and I weigh only about 120 pounds, which I know is tiny. My aorta is also enlarged, standing at about 4.2 centimetres. It's so sad how I know that off by heart. But it means eventually I will have to have heart surgery. It's important to note that even though these are the most common characteristics of people with Marfan syndrome, not everyone will have these. In fact, there is even a small percentage of people with Marfan's who are short in height rather than tall. Okay, so now I've got the basics covered, I'm going to move on to other medical conditions which are associated with Marfan's but not commonly experienced by everyone with Marfan, specifically the ones which I've experienced and how I've dealt with these in my life. I guess first on the list is my protrusio acetabuli. Really sorry if I didn't pronounce that right for anyone. This condition, not exclusive to people with Marfan, is a deepening and slight misalignment of the hip socket. Sadly for me, this led to an inflammation and degeneration of my cartilage and my hip bone, similar to that seen in arthritis. I can't stand on my hip for more than about 5-10 to 10 minutes without needing a short rest and sometimes I do have to make use of a wheelchair, especially when the pain gets really bad. To be completely honest, this was a difficult condition for me to experience growing up. As it started about the age of 9-10, I was a very active individual and I had to give up all my activities practically overnight. That meant saying goodbye to drama, dance and sport, all of which I was really passionate about. Okay, so next on the list I guess is my scoliosis. My scoliosis began because I was walking with a slight limp due to the degeneration of my hip bone. One of my legs was now slightly shorter than the other. Scoliosis is a curvature of the spine and similar to my hip, this condition progressed pretty quickly. So in October 2005, I had metal rods placed either side of my spine with screws all the way down. Common questions I guessed about my spine. Can you feel your rods? No, not at all. They are in there for life and I cannot feel them. Do you set the metal detectors off in airports? Yes, sometimes I set the metal detectors off in airports. Glad that's cleared up. Because of my spinal surgery, I had to have three months off school. My gran, who is an absolute goddess, used to come and sit with me every day and I got a serious daytime TV addiction. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so I really didn't want to tell you guys this bit. Growing up as a girl with Marfan's, the most difficult medical condition for me has been my inverted chest bone and problems I've had with the formation of my chest. I had to wait until April 2009 at 16 years old until I could have an implant put in the right side of my chest. This is quite common in females with Marfan's as sometimes the chest on either one or both sides cannot develop. Lads, this is all your fault. If you didn't like boobs so much, wouldn't be an issue. Okay, so I guess the last main one on the list would be my extreme fatigue. If I don't take my medication, I can sleep and sleep and sleep forever. My dad jokes it's like sleeping beauty, but without the beauty bit. Yeah, cheers dad. I can also get these things called sleep attacks, which is where I get some muscle weakening in my face, and I can start to slow my words a little bit. As you can imagine, can be really embarrassing in social situations, especially something like a date. Hey babe, what would you like to eat. We're getting carbonara. So now I've talked all about the medical aspects of Marfan's, I'd just like to briefly go on to the social side of Marfan's syndrome. When I was 16 years old, I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression disorders. Although that feels like a long time ago, it is still something I have to cope with every day. I was quite badly bullied in primary and high school for the way I looked. And when I got into the public eye, things got a lot worse. More often than not, when I walked down my main high street, I usually get someone shouting anorexic or go eat a pie at me simply because they see my tiny frame and automatically assume I have an eating disorder. I got burgers thrown at me the other week actually which was nice. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I want to emphasise, especially to any young people watching this video who feel like they're different from everyone else, they don't fit in or they simply just feel excluded that it gets better. It gets better with age and it gets better over time. As I get older, I get better and better at handling people when they respond to me with such ignorance and disrespect. You need to remember that you are the stronger person. We were all born this way, we can't change ourselves and we were put on this earth for a purpose, whatever that may be. People need to understand that we're here to stay. The most important thing to remember is to stay true, be yourself. Never let anyone or anything deter you from going for your life goals or dreams. Since being a child, I've missed around a third of schooling due to my medical condition, illness and appointments but since day one I've had my sights set on medical school. I'm not gonna lie it's not been an easy road but I'm very proud of myself to say that I recently found out that I've got an interview for one of the medical schools. I don't say it to brag, I say it to those of you who may have experienced some difficulties in your life perhaps due to ill health and are still struggling to reach your goals. Keep going, you will get there and you will make it. If you've made it to the end of this video then I'd like to say thank Thank you so much for stopping by and listening. Please check out the Young People Get Sick 2 page on Facebook and give us a like. It would mean the world to me. Thank you. Bye. My name's Sophie. I'm 21. Oh, I've got cat hair in my mouth.